Remember this program, right? We just finished with this. It's a dynamic program. It has one line of code that executes in setup, a bunch of lines of code that happen over and over again in draw. Repeating, 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 and what's the result? This static rectangle that just sits there in the window. So what is it that we want to do? We want to figure out how do we animate that rectangle? How do we introduce this idea of variation into a program? And truly, what we're leading up to is this idea of learning about a, a, a fundamental concept of, of computation, this idea of a variable, a program that stores data over time. In the game context, that data could be the scores of different players, the level that uh, a player is on. It could be the positions of things over t as they're moving, right? Any program that has something moving, you've got to store its position. What is its size? And if it's growing, what is its new size? There is data associated that a program is storing, a, a processing sketch is storing whenever it runs. That stuff is being stored in the computer's memory. So that's what we're leading up to, but we're going to kind of start in a simpler way, just by kind of sneaking in of this idea of variation into our processing sketch. So what if, for example, we could say, I'm going to erase this block of code thing. Here we have, we're, we're, we're writing this rectangle. And we're, we're writing, we're drawing this, we're calling the function rectangle. We're drawing a rectangle at 100, 100 with a size of 50, 20. What if instead of saying that, I could just say, ah, I want to draw a rectangle at uh, the mouse's uh, x position, comma 100, comma 50, comma 20. Wouldn't that be nice, right? Instead of saying, oh, I want to draw a rectangle at this specific value, I just want to say draw that rectangle where the mouse is, at the mouse's x position. So if we went and typed this into processing, I am almost certain we'd get an error. It would say something like unexpected, token, void, you know, missing, in, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't know what this is. But, the, but in fact, we can do exactly the same thing. I don't know where I, where I was going with this, but we can actually do this. Instead of saying the mouse is x position, we can go over here and look at this program, and we can actually say mouse x. Look at that. It, it turned this beautiful pink color. It turned this beautiful pink color, right? This blue color is for a function. We think of it as a command. Rect mode center, stroke 255. Mouse x isn't a command, a function. It's a variable. It's a word that stands for a number. Mouse x stands in for whatever the current value of the mouse's x position is. And because processing knows about this word, it turned it pink for us. Oh, I forgot the cameras are going off. <laughs> um, and, 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 and it's great. Oh, just excuse me for a second. I'm going to come and say hi to you. Hi. And I'm going to uh, turn this off and turn it back on. And uh, someday I'll edit that out. But uh, I can't right now. OK, so, um, so this is great. Now let's actually, the, we're at a big exciting moment here. We had a little pause. I'm going to go back and I'm going to run this program. I'm going to run this program. Oh my goodness, look at this. Look at this. Holy moly. Right? I, you know, I don't know. I'm getting excited by just this rectangle moving on the screen. But I don't know. It's really not um, that great. What can we do? Um, so we have this rectangle now moving on the screen, right? Because its position, where it's being drawn, right? It's drawing it. Draw the rectangle. Draw the rectangle. Draw the rectangle. At any moment, it's saying, draw the rectangle where the mouse x is. Where the mouse x is. So as I move it, we get this new rectangle. This is pretty super darn exciting. So we now see how we can introduce this idea of variation into a processing sketch. So let's see. Let's think about some other things. Well, for one, uh, one thing I'm just going to do here really briefly is I can add you know, mouse y here. And so now I'm moving this rectangle with where its x position and its y position is wherever the mouse is. By the way, we can start to get a little crazy. I don't know why I decided to do this, but what if I were to write something like height minus mouse y? We can start to add, oh my goodness, I wrote the word oh, height, and I didn't even explain what that meant. So here, look at this, look at this. Think about this for a second, right? I just introduced the idea of these, what's called a built-in variable. A built-in variable is a word that stands in for a value, and there are just a small number of them. There's mouse x, mouse y. There's another one. There's width and height. When we set up that processing window, we gave it a width of 640 and a size of 360. We could use those values again later in our program, but what if we change the size of the window 
someday. Then we're going to have to find wherever we put those numbers everywhere else and rewrite and, and change those as well. We can dynamically access the current width and height of our sketch window through keywords width and height. And so if I do something like height minus mouse y, you know, think what's going to happen. Okay, well, when mouse y is 0 and the height is 360, 360 minus 0 is 360. So when the mouse is at the top, it'll actually draw it at the bottom and vice versa. Let's run this sketch and we can see, look, it's kind of inversely, it's, uh, its location, its vertical location is inverse to the mouse value. So we can see this is kind of like actually kind of fun to do. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, anyway, it's, uh, it's, uh, if I wish there were, uh, uh, whatever, never mind. Sorry. Uh, uh, it, uh, okay, so back to what we were talking about. Awkward. Um, we have, uh, I'm putting it back to just mouse x, mouse y. So we can see there are other built in variables, all of which um, we could find. Uh, and I think even if I right click on this, I can say find in reference. Right down here, you can see there's a find in reference. So if I wanted to look up mouse x, mouse y, but certainly in the reference, if you go to the product of the processing reference, all of these are going to be documented there. OK, so this brings us to another interesting point. Let's run this. And remember, uh, I think in the previous video, we talked about, OK, well, size should definitely go in setup. Because size is an initialization condition of our program. It's what we do at the beginning. Rec the rectangle should definitely go and draw, because we want to draw this stuff all the time while the program is running. Where should background go? Couldn't really decide, and we just picked an arbitrary decision, and we put background and draw. Well, let's think for a moment. What happens if I put background in setup? OK, so think for in your mind. Pause, th and pause and think what, what's going to happen. OK, maybe you paused, maybe you didn't. Let me give you a little help. When background was in draw, Every time before we do the rectangle, we would draw the background. We would wipe the background clean with a solid color. Now, what does it mean to put background in setup? Setup, the code in setup only ever executes once when the program first begins. We're only drawing the background once when the program first begins. What will happen? Let's run this sketch. We can see that, look, we have a history of every single rectangle ever, right? Because if we don't clear the background, if we don't wipe it every time before we draw the next rectangle, we're leaving the pixels we filled in there previously. So this is this this is a very like simple thing, right? If we put background in setup, we're kind of always seeing everything we draw on top of itself over and over again. If we put background in draw, then we are wiping clean the frame, the the, the um, we are wiping clean the window every time through draw, which gives us that illusion of motion. Right? Wipe the background, draw the rectangle. Wipe it, draw the rectangle a little further over. Draw, wipe it, draw the rectangle a little further over. That gives us this illusion of motion. And you might actually be asking yourself the question, when background was in draw, how come I don't see like all of these steps? How come I don't see draw the background, I see a blank background, then I see the rectangle, then I see a black background, then I see the rectangle, then I see the background. Right? It would almost like flicker. The reason why you don't see that is processing only updates what you see at the very end of draw. It's almost as if there's an invisible line of code right here that says update the screen. So all of this stuff accumulates through draw, and when it gets to the end, it updates. This is why if I put background at the end, we'll never see that rectangle, right? No matter what we do, it's always wiping it at the end of draw, which is what we clearly don't want to do in this case. This is a bug in our program, essentially. OK, so I've shown you mouse x and mouse y. Um, I'm going to. Uh, very quickly show you one other thing, which is that in addition to mouse x, mouse y, there are two other built-in variables, which are called uh, p mouse x and p mouse y. So if we look at this sketch, well, uh, whatever, uh, I didn't mean to do this, but if we look at this sketch, what's happening here? Draw a line from p mouse x, p mouse y, to mouse x, mouse y. So, so what does that mean? Let's come over here for a second. Oh, hi. You come over here with me. Let's come over here for a second. This is our processing window. And this is our mouse. Our mouse is here at one moment in time. At another moment in time, we move the mouse, and maybe it ends up over here. So this is kind of like time equals 0, and this is kind of like time equals 1. Those are the mouse positions, as if we're moving it. Well, this we know at the current time 
we can think of as mouse x, mouse y. Processing always stores for us the previous mouse position and uh, mouse x and mouse y position. So if this is the previous one, what does it mean to draw a line between the two? It means draw that line. But if, what if we do this over and over again? Always draw a line from previous to current. Previous to current. Well, what happens if the mouse moves over here, and then the mouse moves over here, and the mouse moves over here? So this is the beginning. This is a, a, you can almost in like one line of code create a drawing app in processing. Now, actually, the, 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 the possibilities here are endless for what you can do with creating drawing, uh, drawing applications in terms of colors and thickness and brush strokes and, and saving drawings and manipulating them later. And also, this, I almost want to just like stop and only talk about that for a while, but we can't. But, we're, but this is something you might think about if, if you're looking for an idea for a project. But here, we have this very simple idea, draw from previous to current, and let's see what happens when we do that. If we run this program, we can see, look, oh, look at this. You can kind of see it there, right? There's that line from previous to current. Why am I not seeing that continuous line? Because I forgot backgrounds in draw. This is a case where we absolutely want backgrounds to be in setup because we want to be able to see the con that continuous line. We don't want to ever erase what we've drawn. So here we can see, look, right? Now it's always doing it. You know, later we want to see, like, how can I do it only when I click the mouse? We're going to start, there's so much more for us to look at and understand in terms of adding logic and stuff to our program. But this is a nice little example of something else you can do. So what have we got now? We've got all the tools to draw. <laughs> I don't know why, there's nothing over here to look at. We've got all the tools to draw in a processing window. Rectangle, ellipse. Stroke, fill, background. We now understand how to control the flow, have things at the beginning, and things happen in draw. We, can, we see that we can start to vary the program a little bit, but really, what's the only thing that we have so far to vary our program? Mouse x, mouse y, maybe p mouse um, x, p mouse y. So anyway, here, but, so you don't have a lot so far, but you know, essentially uh, what I would say to you, before, uh, what we're going to look at, well, we're trying to get much further than this. We want to be able to introduce all sorts of other variables, our own variables, events that happen when, when, the mouse, when, the, when, uh, when the mouse is clicked or a key is pressed. So we're going to get to all that. But right now I would say to you, see if you can manipulate your processing sketch just with the current mouse location and the previous mouse location. You know, these values don't have to be used just for locations of things on the screen. What if you control the fill? Right, the color of something. When the mouse moves to the right, it becomes more red. When it moves to down, it becomes more blue. How would you do that? How could you control the thickness of this line based on how fast you're moving it? Right? The speed at which you move the mouse is somehow related to the difference between the current location and the previous location. How could you vary its thickness as it moves? By the way, as a clue to that, there's a, here's a method we haven't looked at. There's a function processing called stroke weight. Look that up in the reference. Stroke weight allows you to control almost the, the thickness of this line, right? Is it a very thick line you're drawing, thin, or is it very, very thick, right? So that's something you could look at doing. And in the next video, what we're actually going to look at, we're, the next thing we're going to look at is how to control, how to make things happen when you click the mouse and when you press a key. So we're going to just look very briefly at events in the next video. Um, so try that, and I hope you enjoy it. And uh, you know, also do something else enjoyable that has nothing to do with the computer, because it's probably a good idea too. OK, uh, goodbye.